What a wonderful first reading we have today in this beautiful charismatic uh, address of St. Peter. The charisma is the uh, early, just the, the basic proclamation of the gospel. And he was so um, powerful in his uh, sermon and his, his d address to the people that 3,000 people that day were baptized. I mean, that's, that, that's amazing, amazing. We think we're busy with eight or 10, but 3,000 baptisms. And there's something really important about that because God uh, doesn't do everything by himself. He has chosen to work through others. It's what he does, and he has decided to do it that way. And that means people like you and me. He uses ambassadors. He uses uh, those who can speak to the world and who do speak to the world and bring the message of the gospel to, to the world. And that's, that's our job. God has decided that we are going to do best when we form a community and live in community. You cannot go through the scriptures and find, thou shalt be a loner. That's, that's not in the Bible at all. But it's a constant call to community over and over again. And to bring the gifts that you have to the community in which you live. And there are many, many gifts. And today we, we kind of focus in on uh, vocations. There's one vocation that everybody in the building today has. And that's the universal call to holiness. Everyone is called to holiness. We can't get away from that. It's a, it's a general call, general vocation of, of, of the gospel. So if, uh, you know, if you're not working for holiness, you're not part of the community. So that's one kind that everybody has. There's the ministry and, and the call from God to be a husband or a wife. He calls probably most adults to that particular vocation. And it is a vocation. See, well, I didn't want to be a priest, so I guess I'll get married. If you're single and somebody says that to you, run. <laughs> Fast. But he calls some men and some women to be husband, to be wife. And I was asked a question at U of H the other day. I said, is, is there one perfect uh, husband for me? And I said, no. There are no such things as perfect husbands. I mean, that, that, that does not exist because you marry a sinner. And every wife is a sinner because we're all sinners. So there's many... Uh, people that could be a husband or wife to a particular person. But once that decision is made, I want to live in this vocation because I'm going to be a husband to you. Not just a husband up in the sky, but to a particular person. There is a call to religious life. God calls some men and some women to live in, uh, in, in community. We call them brothers and sisters. Many of the brothers, like I was educated in high school by the Christian brothers. And uh, they had schools all over the world. And they, th their mission was to teach young men. And so we, some men, God calls them to live that way. He calls some women to be in, in the convents. And they, they have many different ministries. Some are teachers, some are nurses, some are social workers. They do many, many different things. But God calls them 
to live in that particular lifestyle, give their lives completely to the work of the church. God calls some men to be permanent deacons. Some are married, some are not. But he calls them to go through a rather rigorous education and formation, but to become servants of God in a special way. In fact, deacon really means server. And they are authorized to do weddings, baptisms, blessings, and they become a great help to the clergy, to the, the priests that are uh, in the parishes. And then he calls some men to be priests. Now, I don't know why God picked me. Uh, he never told me. I thought it was for my good looks, but when I looked in the mirror, that went out the window. Okay. Then I thought it was my singing voice, and well, you know, that's not the reason. But he called me, and he calls all different kinds of men. Not all priests are alike, but every priest is called by God in ordination to forgive sin, to confect the Eucharist, to help people be closer to God. So this vocation, we sometimes just don't pay attention to that. We just kind of go along our lives and do what we want to do. And, and I don't think that's a good idea. If you would do me a favor and pick up one of these cards in the pew. It won't cost you anything except a son or a daughter. This is called by name. And what I'd like you to do is, <clears throat> when you look around in our parish, in your families, pick out those young men or young women who you think would make a good brother, a sister, or a priest. I'm a priest today partly because every time I saw my Uncle George up in Trenton, when we go down there to see the grandparent, etc., he'd always say, Billy, do you, do you ever think about being a priest? And I would say, no. But I was kind of embarrassed a little bit. But that began, began to open up a channel for God's grace of just putting that idea there. And I would like you to put down their name, okay? And this should be for high school and older, okay? High school or older, uh, just to do that. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll put, uh, get a list and we'll have a dinner, et cetera, just to talk, just to talk. And that's how it begins. See, that's how God uses us to help people see their call. And another favor I ask of you, I've told this before, is stop asking your children, what do you want to do when you get older? Stop asking that. It's not a good question. You need to ask your children, what do you think God wants you to do with your life? And when you do that, they'll go, I don't know. I can't hardly talk, I don't know. Well, then you say, you know, uh, I think it would be a good idea if you kind of thought about that, what God wants you to do. Because if you do what God wants you to do, you will have greater peace, greater happiness than if you just want to do your own thing. That's how God works. So just start asking him that question. And God can work. God can work. And we're also starting a new program here in the parish of the uh, traveling vocation cross, the crucifix. It looks like this. And today we have a family who will be given this little cross, and it has some prayers in it. And they promise to pray for vocations from Sunday through Friday, just at their, at their dinner table, at their breakfast table, whatever, to pray for vocations. 
And next week, we'll have three families a week doing this. And you can go on the uh, website and do a sign-up genius uh, that you would like to do this. And you begin to open up the possibility that one of your children is called by God to be in religious life. You might, you might have something like that. And that's how God works. He works through you and me. I never got a telegram from heaven. And I was never struck by lightning. None of those things ever happened to me. But God uses you. He uses me. And listen to what that call might be. And the young people, I just really, uh, I, I want you to start thinking about that. What does God want you to do? Not what do you want to do, but follow the call of the Lord.